Hello, everybody. It's me once again. We'll see how sick you get of me saying that every time for one of these videos. Probably not going to stop. So, during my massive plane marathon of longness, I saw Turning Red, a Disney flick. Pixar, Disney, whatever, same thing. So, I saw the trailers for this and thought, well, that's aimed for me. You have a character turning into a big stuffed animal looking furry thing. Okay, I'm in. You already have me at you have me at TF. Transformation is kinda of my bag. It's not when I'm not doing this. Or in my actual or my um, real life suit or my actual nine to five or all the other things I do that's not this part. Transformation art. That's my thing. That's kinda of what I do, my main thing that I'm known for. And the sonic toilet. We'll get back we'll get back to that. So turning red. Main character turns into a giant red panda. Cool. What's the rest of the movie about? So I talked about seeing everything everywhere all at once earlier. So I managed to pick another movie about generational trauma with um, Japanese with um, Asian characters. The double feature apparently. Two for one sale for the, for this year in ter for uh, movie premises. So this one's nowhere near as dramatic as the other, as everywhere, everything all at once. But some similar territory is treaded upon. It's set in the 2000s in Toronto, so that's a very specific time frame. So if you are from Toronto and grew up in that time frame, this is probably going to be a very interesting watch for you. I am not from Toronto. I didn't. And I was around in the 2000s, but I was not there, so that don't do much for me. Honestly, that's the thing, this movie doesn't do a lot for me, and I'm kind of... I thought it would, but as I watched it, I realized something. One, this is meant for a very particular audience, it's very targeted. Disney movies usually come in two flavors, either A, everybody can watch it and get something out of it, or B, super targeted to a very specific audience chunk. This one's very specific to audience. 13-year-old girls going through puberty. Because the whole movie is a giant pet puberty, puberty, that puberty, 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 puberty it's a PewDiePie metaphor. So, if you are a, a preteen girl experiencing that stuff, one, why the sweet fuck are you watching this video? Go away. Two, I'm not the intended audience. I am a dude, I am a cat person in my late 30s. I, grew, I was around in the 2000s. This movie is very specifically targeted for kids in this time, in that age range, experiencing that particular life event. It's done through a metaphor of instead of having a period, you turn into a giant mini kaiju red panda. Okay, that's a bit of an interesting way to go into this uh, particular thing to discuss. But they do, and it's fine. It's a fun, it's a decent little flick. It's not aimed for me. The other big aspect for this thing is, when you're a little girl, apparently, you are thirsty as hell for boy bands. And this is true, not because I was a, a small child and I, a small teenage girl in the 2000s, but when I was in high school, I had friends who were girls and were super into the boy bands of the time. Every era has their boy bands. It's a cyclical thing. Back, uh, New Kids on the Block, In Sync, Backstreet Boys, uh, whatever was in the last few chunks, and now it's the um, the Korean kids. Be behind the scenes, BTS, whatever. I don't, I don't know. Do I look like I listen to K-pop? No, I don't. It's fine. I just don't care. Or I'll listen to it. So, this gave me a bit of an odd nostalgia for something that I experienced by proxy. Because I saw my friends who were into the, those bands at the time really getting into those. And I'm sitting here on the sidelines going, Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Justin uh, Timberlake. That, yeah. Mm hmm. 
He has ramen for hair. That's fine. And now he's bald. Oh, okay. All right. That's nice. And yeah, so that's going on. Yeah, well, Puberty Metaphor, which I'm not a girl, so I've not had to experience that particular aspect of female purity that this movie is going all over about. I'm trying to think of how to discuss this without getting demonetized. <laughs> eh, like I made pretty money off this shit. <laughs> so, it is what it is. It's fine. If you're of the age bracket this is designed for, you probably got way more out of it than I did. And as a movie, it's decent. The messaging is, is fun. There's some fun moments. The panda, the red panda thing is adorable as hell. It's very cute. The ending is interesting. I wasn't expecting this to end with a kaiju fight, but here we are. I do like the boy band actually got to participate and not just, you know, go ee and flee. They actually help in the finale, which was very unexpected. And yeah, to go back to comparing it to um, everything everywhere all once, it's interesting to see how they approach a very similar, basically the exact same concept of generational trauma in families. Because people screw up their kids by being crappy to them when they're growing up. And when they're adults, they tend to have issues stemming from that. That's the idea that these movies are presenting. This one, hey, your, the kid's mom is completely friggin' broken thanks to what happened with her with her mother when she was a child and had this and had her um, kaiju TF issue. And everything everyone wants. Lady's dad. Stuff happens there. I don't want to go into it because I don't want to spoil that one. So it's interesting to see how two different movies approach it. The Disney one is way lighter. A lot lighter, of course. But similar material is draw is is reached upon and some similar resolutions actually too. Now I think about it, so that's fine. That's fun. I was a muse and spoiler town here. That all the all the people in this family have basically said, uh, said no to this magic power that's getting passed around generation to generation, and the little girl um, May is surprised that the deity that blessed the family is really happy with her because she sticks with having the panda TF power. Kid, this person literally asked a god to turn them into a, into a red panda kaiju. And everyone else in your family has not wanted the gift after for the last several generations. You're the new favorite child, grandchild. Roll with that shit. You know, it's a doofy little movie. It's cute. It's fine. I didn't get a ton out of it, but you might, if you have kids of this age of the of that particular age range, they will probably get way more out of it. So, go have fun with it. It's fine. It's what you do. If you don't see it, you're not missing a ton. You get if, but honestly, kids, watch this one. All the adults, watch everything all at once. There you go. Later. Ah, uh, oh, I'm gonna turn into a big panda, Canada panda kaiju. Ooh, look at my big ass hands. Ooh. Ooh. Later. <laughs>